So the first point on agenda, questions and issues. Does anyone have anything uh, what's not planned for later in the agenda? Okay, I guess as always, we don't have anything here. Then uh, the next one is open PRs and issues and someone added here 5777. Uh, Shubham, wanna speak about it? Yeah, sure. So basically uh, what uh, the suggestion said that uh, we were trying to have a single setter instead of the two set two setters because uh, basically both type and name are pointing to the same thing so it's trying to like get only one setter instead of two but yeah like like it tried the certain in several ways but was not able to do it like i tried my best so so know if it's possible or not but it was not certainly possible from my side so yeah, like I guess if, if to ask whether we need this or not now. So anyone has any opinions on it? I think it is useful for us to, I, I think as a user, it's probably nice to be able to see, okay, I've named my listener this specific thing and then I can look in the status and see that name of the listener and the details about it. Obviously, it does mean we've just got the name and the type is just identical. But from a user perspective, at least now the name makes more sense. And would that leave us then open in future to change type if we wanted to? If we gave people enough warning. What, what have you tried here, Shobam, exactly? If you tried having a single field and one of them with a setter, but two getters. Yeah, I, it was something like this, like, uh, I guess uh, I was trying to get a single setter instead of two because both of them are doing the same thing. So uh, like I tried using some JSON serializers and deserializers to get that done because I guess what happens is that when when we initialize these fields like type or name then certain methods are also built on the basis of them which like which are being built automatically and those generated methods are being used in the code like this with type and with name methods are being generated when we get those getters and setters so I was like what I, I was able to remove one of them, but I was not able to like remove this dependency of these uh, generated methods. Like we need these generated methods, even if like, I don't know, I, I just tried to remove it, but uh, like it's heavily dependent on these generated methods. So that's why I was not able to uh, get it done. But this is in the status, isn't it? Yeah. So the way the sort of that works is that um, the operator writes the status and then somebody consuming the CR API can read it. So it kind of doesn't matter if we've got multiple setters, I guess. Because it's us, it, we'd only really expect it was us that was calling them or I guess people writing unit tests who were using our API. But I don't think that's um such a big deal for them okay so we could just you know get by with two getters and two setters 
and as long as we always set both I mean that's assuming they're not backed by a single field which would you know be preferable I think because then it's impossible to set both to different values I guess the question is at some point will we want to evolve the type to be the actual type rather than the name well we can't do that anyway until we've gone through some sort of deprecation cycle yeah but that, that would have is... to be in a v2 yeah. uh, schema basically yeah i guess that uh, the decision was that uh, it was going to be the first step for doing that so let's start with adding the type and the name in status with the same value and then in the future deprecating and having the type yeah in that case i think it's okay to have the multiple setters rather than having to unpick ourselves later yeah yep okay then i guess tom and paulo you should review the pr yep i will have another pass can you have me as a reviewer please shaban i don't think i am already sure sure thanks Okay, any other PR someone wants to discuss? Okay, then there are two proposals added here. First one is the Connect API proposal. I think this one's getting pretty close. I think the only outstanding question that I thought would be worth just a quick discussion here is whether or not we want to adjust this proposal to more closely align to the proposal, I think it's 46, the one with the CA. Um, I think at the moment, the approach, the approach and the fields kind of match more closely what we have existing in Strimsy. Um, I don't think it would, be a very big change to the proposal to align it with the suggestion for how the new CA process would work. And at the current kind of description of how things flow would be very similar to a sort of external type in that proposal. Um, in terms of how it affects connect directly, it would still be a case, I think, of the connect operator um, isn't sort of necessarily expecting to handle its own certificates it would expect to call something else um but it could be they could do that using the mechanism described in the other proposal of making a request somewhere and things like that so i think some code might be added to the connect operator um but it's just whether or not we think we want to align that more closely or keep connect as kind of um working um in a way that means we assume users bring all their own certificates and it's not kind of bound into the way that Strimsy does certificates. I think that if you ask them to bring their own certificates, you will very quickly get requests to be able to integrate it with cert manager and so on. Yeah. So I think it, for me, it would make sense to have it aligned with the other proposal, probably. Hang on a second, but why why does this Connect API need to issue certificates rather than just use them? So the specific question is, we're assuming at some point that the, so the REST API needs a certificate that it's going to host. The question is, do we say to the user, you have to bring the certificate, you have to manage it, or do we say, actually, this works in the same way as the rest of Strimsy, which means you can use something like Cert Manager, and Strimsy will handle making the request to Cert Manager, doing the new request when things expire, etc. It, it is a slightly different model at the moment. The current proposal assumes that the user has to manage the lifecycle of the certificate and know that they need to update a new one and things like that. 
we could swap to a slightly different model where the operator is kind of helping you to update the certificate when it expires and stuff, but using the kind of pluggable mechanism that you've defined in the other proposal. So the, the difference as I see it, I think, is that for the, the cluster CA, we, you know, in order to sort of have a nice out of the box experience for Strimzy and TLS support and all the rest, we have to be issuing certificates. I suppose you could make the same argument here. It's, it's the same for both of them. There's no difference really. You are just seeing it differently because of how it was historically done. Yeah. But you still, in, in, in Streamsy for the Kafka cluster, you can argue in the same way that it doesn't need the CA, right? You can have just the user provide the server certificates and uh, some trusted CA to set up the trust in the same way as, uh, as the Connect proposal has it. So that can be exactly the same. There's no real difference there. So is this a whole new CA? Um, I, for the REST API endpoint, it doesn't ha well, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new CA, but obviously the certificate has to be new, so I guess. I think for both of the proposals, it's important to free yourself from the thinking that the cluster means new CA because I don't think that's what the users want. They like the whole idea of using things like search manager and so on. One of the things behind it is that they want to integrate it with their existing CAs, which they already use. So we just reuse the client CA. Why client CA? Well, okay, so why cluster CA? We don't necessarily reuse any CA, I think. In none of the proposals or? So what I mean is that with the, the current stuff, the cluster, I mean, it's not really very helpful, but we've got one sort of logical um, thing where the, all the components in the cluster trust some set of CA certificates. And there's another set of potentially different CA certificates that are used for the client CA. And I'm asking, is this a third set of CA certificates or is it the same as one of those existing ones? Um. Not sure the split to clients and cluster CA is necessarily useful for everyone. I think in a lot of cases, the users normally wouldn't necessarily make a difference, right? You would have some enterprise CA, which issues the certificates, and that would issue the certificate for the Kafka brokers for the Zookeeper node, for the Connect node, but it would, for example, probably quite often also issue the user certificates for the client applications to authenticate if you want to use TLS authentication. Yeah, I agree that sometimes they happen to be the same set. The question is, should these necessarily be the same as one of those two existing sets? I think um, the cluster CA would be the one I would lean towards in terms of it, it feels odd to have a separate CA just for this one endpoint. And the expectation is that for the most part, you're using this to kind of connect to the cluster to do administrative tasks, or you're using it for other components within Streamsy to connect it to your administrative tasks. So the cluster CA for me feels like a sensible fit for that. But why do we care about it? I mean, 
okay, for the Kafka cluster, we have this the cluster and the client CA as a legacy, right? So we have to live with them and we have to provide them as the default. But we said we do not want to do this for connect. For connect, the default is basically as it is today without anything. And if the user wants to use something for security, then they basically configure it. And from that point on, I don't think we should really care too much about what the CA is. The users should provide us information about what the CA is, and the user should basically provide us the CA in some form of some, some CA trust chain, which we should trust. But why do we care whether that's the cluster CA, the client CA, or some completely different CA? I guess a key question, and I don't know if it's Tom why you're asking, if we move this proposal across to align more closely with the other CA proposal, would we implement a default strimz generates certificates itself option, or would we say that this endpoint you have to pick either something like cert manager or you have to pick the external type and provide the certificates yourself? Strimzy will never um, create and sign the certificates itself for this. It will just make requests for certificates on your behalf to whatever external system you've chosen to use. Just my <laughs> my two cents on this. Um, so, um, referring to the to the proposal that we had from Tom, uh, I would think that uh, the user should have the freedom to use uh, any number of CAs that he wants to use for anything. So, it can use just one CA to sign everything, as uh, Jakub was saying. He could use uh, I don't know uh, one CA. So even if it's a crazy thing to do one CA for signing, uh, uh, so uh, one different CA for each broker for signing the server for each broker, which is something crazy, but anyway, it means not having just one CA, but having multiple CAs. So I, I guess that uh, uh, in that proposal, which, so, so as far as I understood, there is the possibility to do that. So there is the possibility for the user having the freedom, right? To have one or multiple CAs for signing uh, one or more of the uh, certificate on the brokers or for the clients or even mixing, uh, I don't know, using for two brokers uh, one CA to sign the certificate and using a different CA for signing the certificate on another broker. It's something crazy. I'm just talking about freedom. So leaving the freedom to the user to use uh, as many CAs they want to use for signing, as many certificates they, they have to provide for the brokers, for the clients, and so on. Now, aligned to the Connect REST API, uh, I think that it's kind of the same, right? So, the yeah, the question from Kate, I, so I, if I got uh, in the right way, is uh, what happens if the user want uh, StreamZ to generate the certificate? Is it to use... Uh, something like a cluster CA, or we want to force the user to provide the, 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 the certificate. Um, in the Tom proposal, as far as understood, uh, we are talking about secrets, but these secrets can be provided by the users, right? So even if there is a no cert manager in the picture, the users can create these secrets manually somehow and providing the certificate. So I guess that we are kind of on the same page or I'm missing something. So my understanding is in Tom's proposal, we still have the default behavior um, that sort of out of the box secure option where Strimzy will um, create and manage the certificates fully for you. So using the existing path, I guess what I'm proposing is maybe we don't support that for the connect REST API endpoint. And we say the default behavior is it's insecure. If you want it to be secure, either you use these mechanisms to take advantage of cert manager or vault or whatever, 
or the the option that you just um, talked about where we say, or you can create the certificate yourself and put it in the secret and we'll use it. But there's sort of no option where Shrimzy itself is managing the certificates because we haven't historically done that for this endpoint. So there's no backward compatibility issue. And it means we're not introducing another option for users to ask Shrimzy to fully manage the certificates. So it means that to be compliant with the, 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 the proposal from Tom, we kind of need some support like this. So how, when, when StreamZ generates the certificate for you? So I don't know if anyone else than me, uh, because I know I raised the comment on Kate's proposal about aligning it with the other one. I don't know if anyone else, anyone else did that. But my point there was completely different. It was not about generating and managing something by default by Streamzy. I don't think we should do it. I think we should let it leave it to the user or to the external tools. The thing which I meant with it more was that Tom's proposal suggests fairly tight integration with some third-party tools such as Cert Manager and uh, and uh, Vault and so on. It basically says that there will be mechanism how you say, okay, streams, please use cert manager in this specific way, or I mean, it might not be there from day one, but long-term it suggests things like that. And uh, then the cluster operator will basically talk or interact with the cert manager and will get the certificates issued by cert manager. And now I don't know how much changed in the last days because I was more busy around log 4 j stuff, but the connect proposal was basically not saying this. The connect proposal was basically saying, uh, oh, hey, you generate the certificates in whatever way you want and then just pass it through the secret into the connect, which in general works well but I find it very weird that we are saying that we want to have, or I mean, the CA proposal is just a proposal right now. It's not approved or anything. So it's not like we have it, but assuming the proposals would pass, we are basically saying uh, on the connect side that we want to have absolutely minimal coupling to the tools for managing certificates. And the only interaction point is you tell us as the user, this is the secret and these are the keys under which the certificate is stored. This is the secret and this is the key under which the, the CA trust chain is stored. And the user takes care of everything. If the user wants to generate it with the cert manager or anything else, then in general, they can, but streams, it doesn't care about it at all. It's user's responsibility and user somehow gets it into the secret and pass the secret to connect. On the other hand, in the broker, it sounded to me like the proposal suggests something different. The proposal suggests something like there will be some configuration which will basically say something like, I want to use cert manager to manage the certificates. This is the cert manager CA which exists. Please uh, use it. And then streams will go and streams will create the certificate uh, requests as needed with cert manager and get the created certificates by cert manager. Uh, so there will be very tight coupling and there will be direct interaction between streams and the third party tooling for managing uh, the certificates. And assuming I got it right for that proposal and that isn't some misunderstanding then this seems to be very weird that on one side in the Kafka cluster, we have very tight coupling between these things and they interact with each directly. And uh, on the other hand, in the Kafka Connect proposal, we basically say, oh, hey, user, do it whatever you want, however you want it, we don't care, just give us the secret. So for me, the question is why to do this different approach in both sides, why not do the same on uh, for both things. So if we want to say that secrets is the interface we want to use, then that's fine. But why not use it for the Kafka cluster as well then? Uh, 
or the other way around, why not use the tight integration, which we are basically saying in the proposal for the Kafka's broker CA, we want to have there, why not use it for Connect as well? My understanding in the Tom proposal, but maybe I'm wrong, is that uh, for the brokers, you can use this tight way, so using Cert Manager, so all the other Bolt, etc. But you can even use the other way, so having the user providing the secrets as the user does today with the, the they roam CA, they, they have to generate the secret manually or filling with the certificates, blah, 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 and then they provide the secret to us. So that was my, my understanding that, uh, that for the broker, you can do both way. So tight using cert manager or having the user uh, yeah, generating the, and providing the secret. Oh, on the other I side, don't you are think, right. I don't you are think right. Tom, can, Tom is the author, Tom should probably speak about it, but I don't think the CA proposal is suggesting the same level of integration as the Connect is suggesting. Tom's proposal basically says we are backwards compatible. So if the user was providing us custom CA yesterday, then they can provide it tomorrow as well and we will generate from it the, the certificate. But that's not the same integration as uh, what Kate suggests for Connect where the user provides the server certificates and the CA is not provided as a full CA, including private key, but the CA is provided only as, uh, uh, as a trust chain, basically. Yeah, so that that's correct. And I think um, to answer your question about why there should be that difference, Jakob, I think it boils down to the fact that um, certainly for the cluster CA, um, in order for the operator to do a good job and to be able to support things like scale up, for example, um, that would be really awkward to do if users had to provide their own certificates, I think, um, because you've got to orchestrate trust within all the different existing pods in you but know that's the, the same program. that's the same for connect the connect they also talk horizontally with each other as well but is the difference not that they're using a i mean they're using a deployment currently so we just they don't have a separate network identity right and therefore a single certificate. That is not correct. So, so there's the forwarding on. going on between the follower connect node and the leader connect node. Yeah, yeah. And that happens based on the port IP. Okay. So the other question on the on the Connect Re, uh, REST API proposal is, remember me why it's not enough to provide the CI certificate and letting the streams operator to generate the server certificate. Why, why we, we were going the direction that the user has to provide the server certificate and not just the CA? Because that's the part which doesn't work and we want to get rid of it. What do you mean, sorry, Jakub? Well, the whole thing around streams in managing the CAs, that's the thing which doesn't really work. That's the thing which we cannot really get rid of from day one to day two, but that's really the thing which we don't want to do anymore. Right? No, or no, sorry. I wouldn't no, no, want no, to I... do it anymore. No, 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 I, I was saying uh, uh, the CA provided by third manager or the user, and then having stream is just generating the ser the server certificate based on the CA, not yeah. We do not want to do it, or at least my personal view is that we do not want to do it. 
Ah, okay, because we want uh, something like third manager and friends to generate the server certificates as well. So historically, that's one of the biggest source of the problems which we have. And it's also one of the biggest sources of feature requests for doing things differently, right? So, I mean, we had our reasons why we did it the way we did it. And the tooling uh, such as search manager when we did it was on a completely different level of maturity and was not used as much as it is today. But I think objectively to me, it seems that this isn't something Strimzy is doing well. This isn't something Strimzy is doing to, in a way that it matches the user requirements. And I think long-term we should try to get rid of it. We cannot do it. We cannot say from tomorrow we don't support this and you have to use Cert Manager completely easily because there are existing clusters with the Streamsy cluster CA and client CA. But for me, at least the direction should be to try to get rid of it as much as possible. This proposal specifically, are we at a point where actually it's worth parking it until we've worked out the other CA proposal and then revisiting this once that one's kind of more? I think we might be because we're discussing more the other one than this one, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Because what we don't want to do is sort of zoom ahead and implement this and then find actually, even if even if we have kept in mind the other proposal, the, the names, the fields all don't line up, et cetera. And then we've got an issue with having to evolve um, CLs and things, so. Yeah, I think that unless, unless we say that we actually want to do things differently for Connect than for Kafka, then at the end, the proposals are coupled, right? And one cannot be approved without the other. But even if we decide to do it differently, it might be that it's easier to make that decision once the other one is kind of agreed. Possibly, yeah. So does that sound like we should move to the next point? Yeah, I think so. Okay, the next proposal marked for discussion is 43. Uh, that one's also mine. It's got um, pretty much all approvals. Um, I wasn't sure what else was needed to close it. I have been doing some investigations about the specific shape of the secret and um, kind of the names of the fields, what exactly makes sense um, based on trying out a few different um, apps. But I didn't know whether we were happy to sort of merge this and I can always open a, a subsequent PR just for that, those specific pieces, or it, can, it might be that they just change very slightly in implementation. Um, I guess the only kind of main question was um, whether we want to pick the names of the secrets to align with a specific application like um, like generic Kafka clients versus something like Quarkus versus something like Spring. Um, but I wondered if it was worth seeing if we could get this merged now, um, if people are happy, because I feel like that the kind of specific shape of the secret um, it is, I guess, more sort of implementation and exactly what makes the most sense for um, the apps we want to support. So, so it needs three approvals to be approved, which it has. I think we should maybe add some note and give everyone else more time if they want to comment. Uh, 
how much time do we want to give them tomorrow or through Monday? Till Monday. The only other question I had on it was, do you need me to rename the file so it's got a higher number? Because I think some proposals have gone in since I created it. It <clears throat> looks like this one will be the next one merged. So if you want to rename it and if you want to add it to the index in the readme, okay. you can definitely do it. But it's also something we can just do when, when merging okay. up to you. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that's the proposals. And now we have a bunch of separate points for discussion. So uh, this one was something I added. Uh, so uh, yeah, originally we wanted to do 027 release before the holidays, but then it was delayed by the log for JCVs. So I guess the question is, what do we want to do now? Whether we want to try to do 027 now before Christmas or whether we want to leave that for January. Plus, I guess there's a separate question whether we want to do 0.26.2 with the other log4j fix, which will basically bump it to the 2.16 version, or whether we want to leave that to the 0.27 for whenever we decide to release it. Anyone has any opinions or thoughts? Are any any major features that we are adding for? Uh saying let let's wait for 027 you mean what features are we adding in 027 yeah yeah if there are some main features or uh, yeah, yeah bigger the, the features arm, the arm support is certainly a main yeah. feature yeah right we also have mitigations right for these problems from your blog post for the problems that we had with log4j well, we released this 0.26.1, so that solves the solves the main CVE, which was critical. Oh, it's not solved the one related to the JMS appender. No, that's not about the JMS appender. There's some so look for J2 has some follow-up CVE, which is not critical. It has fairly low score. But a lot of users are asking about the release for that because, yeah, I think they don't really understand the difference between the original log 4 shell CV and the, and the CV which affects 215 and has no mitigation. But to my understanding, you need some special configurations to be able to actually trigger it. So that's why the score is relatively low for it and that's what's in the log for j216 fixed only would 27 have a different set of um, broker versions supported than 26 as far as i know there's no kafka release yet or is it yeah so that's a no no there's not um is, is I, there I, I just lose track or or i just lose track there's so many versions in my life I just can't cope. Um, so in that case, I guess there's no may there's no sort of major downside to having a zero twenty seven because it's not really re going to require people to upgrade to a newer broker version. It's just a matter of kind of when we would be giving people access to things like the ARM support. So if we can do zero twenty seven before Christmas, then I'd be inclined towards that. If we can't, then I'd be inclined to getting 0.26.2 out before Christmas. Uh, so that we can sorry. close. The... Sorry. 
sorry mm. once again i wasn't paying attention were you suggesting to do 0262 if you don't do 027 before christmas yes yes yeah i agree so okay then do you want to do 027 before christmas that will be yeah. The, the the yeah the first preference yeah so do you have time to test the things and so on i i i can do my test i'm not sure about the, the arm support uh, how to test that well it's not about testing the arm support right but i so i can probably run the release but i probably don't want to be the only one testing it so the question is whether so you have now first day if nothing else we need to do the bridge release anyway first with the 216 so if we want to do 027 now the best thing we can do is to have the release candidate somewhere over the weekend or monday so the question really is not whether we really want it, but whether we have the time to do it, whether there is enough people who will still be able to to test the release yeah, uh, just... next week and so on. And who, who so, is able to test the arm support? I am able to test the arm support. You don't okay, worry yeah. about arm support, but... Uh, but still, there are other changes as well, and uh, things need to be tested in general, right? So I can help for sure with the um, with the, the bridge release. So I can work on that if it can help you, and uh, and then helping that's, on testing. The bridge release is the easy part because they're just yeah. fixing the log for J. Yeah, yeah, just spending the time to release it. I was mentioning right. It's the simple part. I know. And and then I can help on testing if you want. Okay, so it sounds like we want to do zero twenty seven now. Okay. The next topic is logging popular topic these days yeah i'm sure we've all loved um talking about this over the last week or so um i kind of don't know what i want to say here um i guess what i want to say is that um streams itself depends on log for j2 which has got all these um fancy appenders a lot of which don't really make any sense in Kubernetes, where we'd expect that rather than people doing crazy things like opening sockets and just spewing logs at them or SMTP appenders or logging to a database, we'd expect that to be handled by um, Kubernetes. So we've got quite a lot of code in there and therefore attack surface which we don't actually need and doesn't really align well with um, the whole point of running stuff in kubernetes so i just sort of wanted to sound people out about what appetite there might be for doing anything about that or whether we think users do actually use some of these uh um i don't know what to call them well, I'll call them appenders, and that way I'm not um, not being too judgmental. I never heard about anyone using any of the fancy ones like JMS and so on. Do we have any appetite for getting rid of them, though, from our images? I don't know. What does it mean for backwards compatibility? 
probably nothing good, right? Well, if people are using them, then it would be a backwards incompatible change. Yeah, I meant which more. Would, which would which? Cool. Yeah, leaving that aside, that someone is actually using it. There's still you have the CRs with some lock configurations for different components, and moving to other. Other logging tooling will probably change that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would depend on how it was done. I mean, you know, you can imagine the most brutal way of doing it would just be to uh, remove those classes from the jar file as part of building the images. Yeah, okay, that, that would probably be backwards compatible for everyone who doesn't use the removed parts directly, right? I mean, do people think this is but, crazy or? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think removing classes from jars, I think that's crazy. It would anyway trigger all the security scanners, which will see, hey, look for J2216 that has this critical CVE. It will be quite hard to explain and convince the users that, yeah, it would save it from the security perspective, but it would, for example, not save much effort on doing new releases to fix the CVEs yeah, because the things will be tripping the scanners. Yeah, that's a good point. So I personally don't have strong opinion about the logging framework used. So yeah, if there would be something what you would think is better, then the only thing I think we should consider would be the backwards compatibility and what does the change mean for the for the users with some local level configuration and so on, but otherwise I would be fine with it. Yeah, I mean, the absence of a, a good replacement is definitely a sticking point and you're right about needing to have compatibility for the config so it would be tricky to do and therefore a lot of effort on the other hand you know it feels quite likely that um, a lot more eyes are going to be on log for j2 in the coming weeks and months which is both good and bad i guess right might mean more CVEs, might also mean more security. And the more, the, the, I guess the more CVEs are unlikely to be as critical. It feels like there's a bit of a gap in terms of, you know, Java logging implementation that actually is well suited to working in Kubernetes, but that's not really our problems to solve. Yeah, it sounds like there's a huge space for some log for J2 light, right? Which would maybe keep just some basic set of appenders and so on, for example. Sorry, Jakub, on the notes that you wrote down, is the one, the first and the third point kind of the same? 
So are you suggesting to use a lightweight library without JMS Appender, but then there is the problem with backward compatibility? Can we just have the same? So, well, are you meant something different uh, comparing the first and the third point in the list? Well, I try to capture a discussion, right? I'm not trying to capture any faults, but so with fun to get rid of the the baggage and the security risk, right? That seems to be to some extent in some obscure appenders and configurations. And one way to do it would be to, for example, use another library. Yes. Other way to do it would be, for example, as Tom suggested, to remove some of these things from the jars and so on. Yeah, so there are two two ways that we can follow. So, but we have three points on this list. So what I was saying is you can just merge the first and the third because they are the same. So should we use something more, I don't know, a, a lightweight library? Well, the first point is really just the general elaboration on what we talked about, right? Yeah, uh, it, it sounds a little bit confused that you are proposing three different ways to do that. While I'm, there not are just proposing, I'm not proposing anything. I'm trying to take the most. No, of what you yes, about. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will just merge the first and the third just to, because at the end of the discussion, we have two solutions. The one proposed by Tom, which is uh, removing the classes and the other one using a different library. Yeah, but this really describes the problem, right? This is one possible solution which we discussed. And this is another possible solution which we discussed. Okay, maybe a different indentation can help then. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound like there's any great appetite for doing this at this point, so. Uh, I wonder if we can reconsider this maybe a couple of months, maybe see what Log4j or what uh, the community in general, how they react to, to what happened, because I feel like this is a, a pretty common feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, across, I mean, the websites have been browsing past few days, but yeah, many people seem to consider like, why can't we have something more lightweight? So something might may emerge in the community, you know? uh, and maybe yeah. if nothing happens, maybe we can reconsider if we want this for ourselves. I think that's probably a, a good way forward, Mikhail. I'm just browsing the log4j mailing list and yeah, there's a few discussions. <laughs> Not sure what will happen, but it's being discussed. Okay, do we have anything else to this? Sounds like not. So we are running out of time, but I wanted to raise the last point which we already touched around the testing. So we have now the, <clears throat> as I call it, experimental support for ARM64, but ideally we should have some better testing for that and coverage and so on. There are several organizations or places or companies which offer some infrastructure for projects like us. One of them is, for example, Oracle Cloud and so on. So I wanted to check if it would be okay with everyone if I, uh, talk with some of them and see what they can uh, offer. 
so that we can get some better testing for that as well. Yeah, I don't see that there's any harm in talking. Obviously, we need to be able to test this stuff if we're going to support it. Okay, uh, so I wanted to originally check on the survey on incubation, but I guess we are running out of time, so we we'll probably do that next time. Does anyone have any last words for the last minute? If not, then I guess uh, we cancel the next meeting in two weeks and meet again in the new year. Sorry, Jakob. Yeah, just about this. Do you think that it's worth taking the meeting uh, on 30, right? So the end of December? I don't know if how many people will join. I think everyone will be on some PTO and so on, or almost everyone are. Yeah, so for this reason, I was... Uh, saying maybe we should just cancel it and the next one will be on new year yeah i didn't really expect it that we should do the meeting sounds good to me okay then i guess uh see you around on slack and see you on the next call in the January. Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very Bye. much. Bye.